When nuclear power is used properly, it has many great benefits, although it comes at a high cost. When Germany invaded the USSR in 1941, all of the fundamental research on the nuclear power that the USSR had discovered, which was originally used to find alternative power source, was now turned into military applications. With the creation of the nuclear bomb in World War II, nuclear power was disdained and feared due to its destructive force. However, after World War II, countries began to realize nuclear power could be used as an alternative power source. Before the start of World War II, the USSR was making great progress in nuclear physics and had begun to understand how to harness and properly use nuclear energy. The USSR was working on radioactive materials they had found in Central Asia, such as rocks containing small amounts of uranium-235. During the 1917 revolution, the USSR boosted their scientific research and established ten physics institutes in major Russian cities. Many famous scientists were also put to work on discovering more about nuclear power and energy, such as Colonel Sinelkov, Pyotr Kapista, and Vladimir Vernansky. This helped boost research a ton, and by the 1930s there were several research centers specializing in nuclear physics. One of these, called the FTI, was organized by Curl in 1931. Unfortunately, by this time, many scientists were falling victim to Stalin's purges, and over half the staff of the Kharkov FTI were arrested. Nevertheless, the USSR saw great advances in the understanding of nuclear energy and power. The United States joined World War II on December 8, 1941. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the United States developed a top-secret plan called the Manhattan Project to create a nuclear bomb and pose as a world nuclear power. Over 130,000 people were employed to work on this project. The scientists employed on this top-secret project de developed an atomic bomb to be dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki to potentially end the Cold War and eliminate the threat of Japan as a world power. On July 16, 1945, this top-secret plan was carried out in New Mexico close to Alamogordo and was deemed the first ever successful nuclear bomb test. The scientists were sworn under oath not to tell anyone about this top-secret plan, including family or close friends. The Trinity Bomb, as it was called, contained 20,000 tons of TNT. This marked the beginning of the nuclear age throughout the world. After word got out that the United States had created the first ever nuclear bomb, the rest of the world began to develop their own kind of nuclear weaponry, thus starting the worldwide nuclear arms race. Soon after, the Soviet United Union. States had their own successful nuclear bomb test, codenamed First Lightning. After the United States and the Soviet Union pulled ahead in the nuclear arms race, the United Nations wished to eliminate any nuclear weaponry because they posed as a threat to the United States along with the rest of the world. Countries all over the world followed in the footsteps of their rising competitors, with as many as 13 countries having successful tests in a matter of years after the start of the nuclear arms race. During World War II, Japan had began to pose as a world threat to the safety of the United States. Because of this potential threat, the United States dropped the first ever atomic bomb, Fat Man, on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, killing around 140,000 people. Only three days later, Little Boy was dropped on Nagasaki, killing close to 74,000 people. Then Seven years, years later, later, on October 16, 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis had began. The Cuban Missile Crisis lasted about a, a week long. This event started when the United States found out that the Soviet Union had hidden bombs in Cuba and could aim them at, at the U.S. at any time. This was the closest point in, in history that the world had began on the verge of World War III. During World War II and the Cold War, nuclear energy posed as a threat to every country worldwide. After World War II and the Cold War, nuclear energy was and still is used as an alternative power source to supply parts of the world with electricity in a more eco-friendly way. Nuclear power is a much better alternative compared to coal or any other power source that's harmful to the environment. Old nuclear warheads have been dismantled and their fuel is used to power over 100 U.S. nuclear reactors and nuclear power is now supplying around 13% of the world's power source. Nuclear reactors have been also preventing a climate change. The low carbon electricity produced by such reactors provides 20% of the nation's power and by the estimates of climate scientist James Hansen of Columbia University avoided 64 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas pollution. Nuclear power plants do not shoot soot and other air pollution like coal-fired plants do and has saved around 1.8 million lives. If all the energy in the world would be converted to nuclear energy, the pollution caused by other energy sources would be reduced significantly. France had already begun the journey from burning fossil fuels to nuclear fission as an alternate power source. This lowers greenhouse emissions by 2% every year. The world needs to drop its global warming pollution by 6% annually to avoid dangerous climate changes. The rise in greenhouse gases and global warming is caused by our use of energy inefficiently. However, nuclear power produces very low amounts of CO2 and is recognized as the least damaging energy source for emitting greenhouse gases. 
The process to creating a more eco-friendly energy all begins in the nuclear reactors worldwide. The first step into creating nuclear energy is, gathered, is gathering the fuel. The key to creating the nuclear energy is a small uranium-225 pellets that are smaller than an inch wide. However, one small pellet produces the same amount of energy as one ton of coal. Thousands of these small pellets are placed in 200 plus rods that are over 12 feet long. This part of the nuclear reactor is called the fuel assembly. The next part of the reactor is where the e electricity is actually produced. In the reactor, uranium atoms are split when they combine with neutrons. This chain reaction produces heat, which is controlled by control rods, which attract neutrons. The heat that is produced is then transferred to the first of three water tanks called the primary coolant. In this tank, the heat becomes pressurized. The pressure begins to apply to the heat, preventing boiling and spilling out of the tank while, while it cools. After the water cools to a certain type of temperature, it then travels to the steam generator. In this part of the process, hot water passes through tubes near steam generators. These tubes are surrounded by another water tank called the secondary coolant. The water then travels through the secondary coolant and is turned into steam. The steam makes its way to the turbines. The produced steam then pushes a giant turbine to power an electrical generator. The magnets inside of the generator produce e electricity. While the steam passes over the third water tank, the steam condenses back into water. The newly condensed water finally stops at the cooling towers. The water circulates through the tower to continue to cool down. Water is then pumped to the top of the tower, which allows the water to pour down to the towers, which cools the water further. Fans at the bottom of the tower pull out the air through the water, which lowers the overall temperature of the water. After the water is cooled to the right of the temperature, it, it flows back up into the turbine to restart the process again. Nuclear energy was first used as a weapon of mass destruction, but as research went on, scientists discovered that it's much more than a weapon that could destroy humanity, but an eco-friendly alternative power source that could quite possibly help end global warming and save lives.